day. I am renewed and strengthened by thy life-giving energy. I am renewed and strengthened by thy life-giving energy. I am renewed and strengthened by thy life-giving energy. I am renewed and strengthened by thy life-giving energy. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Guru Preceptors, Jesus Christ, Ave Krishna, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Teswarji, Beloved Guru Deva, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, Saints of all religions, we bow at thy feet. We ask thy blessings on our day as we attune ourselves to thy consciousness, to thy joy. We are thine, be thou ours. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let's start with a brief chant and brief period of meditation. <coughs> <coughs> Let's meditate now just for a few minutes to get inhale against the whole body till it vibrates. Exhale and inhale. Exhale once more. I just sit for just a couple of minutes, easing up. The spiritual eye, up our consciousness there as we attune today <clears throat> to this topic, how to live by God and God and Guru's grace. Just lift your gaze up, draw the grace in you now. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <clears throat> I want to read uh, from Swami Kriyanandaji just for a moment here on grace. He says, remember God's power is everywhere. We must tap it by attuning ourselves to its wavelength. This we can do by acting with the full sense of power ourselves and then inviting God to spiritualize this power, <clears throat> that its source be not the ego, but the divine consciousness. And finally, divine grace is omniscient after all, 
as well as all powerful, it is we who must adapt ourselves to its ways. It will not conform itself to ours. Good morning, friends. So glad you can join us today. <clears throat> We're going to start this weekend for some weeks ahead. I'm just talking for just, we'll have half hour sessions that will include uh, chanting, affirmation, maybe a little bit of exercise, a talk, healing prayers, so that we can attune to the vibrations of our masters of God we can draw their grace, their help, their protection. And so I want to talk today, as you could hear from Swamiji, about what is grace. And I want to talk about, in the first part of our day, how we draw on grace. Tomorrow I'll talk about af after meditation, how we draw on grace. And then during our day, uh, the next day, I'll talk on how to draw God's grace and Guru's grace. And then the final day, I'll talk about, in the evening time, how to draw on God's grace. Think of uh, a power, a source, uh, a flood of energy, of magnetism that's pushing us in the right direction that's helping us, that's inspiring us, giving us strength, that's protecting us, that's ever there, as Swamiji said, that's all around us, just like the air and the sun, and oh, it's every, everywhere around us, within and all everywhere outside of us. But we have to attune ourselves to that grace. I was remembering when I was in Zimbabwe many uh, years back, I went to the Victoria Falls and it's just so wonderful because that's the largest waterfall, I believe, that there is. And it was just crashing water, just crashing. And, and so the water would hit you from wherever you were standing. And it was just such a wonderful way to attune to the power of God. And if you think of grace, just think of a crashing waterfall of energy, of magnetism, help that's always. a window that's closed and you feel stuffy inside and you open the window and the fresh air comes in or a drape where it's shutting off the sun you open the drape open the curtain and then the sunshine comes in and so what we need to do with grace is allow it to come in there was a man who master said uh, just let me get a sip of water so keep thinking of this topic because this man, Master, said he wanted to drink the whole lake of God's consciousness, but he could only drink three glasses of water. He just was not open. He wasn't attuned to that flow of grace. And grace can help us in every aspect of our lives. And our health, we can get more healthy. We can become well. We can become more successful. We can become more uh, strong in our minds, more clear, more inspired, more happy. Our children can be well. Uh, uh, everything around us in our jobs, uh, things can happen. Opportunities come. Circumstances change. All of this is due to the right flow of energy. The right flow, I mean, what grace is God and Guru in us. God and Guru helping us. God and Guru's inspiration in us. And as we open ourselves, we start feeling that things just start changing in our lives. And so the grace that comes to us, we can use it in every aspect of what we're doing. Now, I wanted to talk on how do we attune to that grace? Now, it's an interesting thing because <clears throat> we're talking about uh, in the mornings, God's grace, drawing God's grace in the mornings. Now, I, I tend to get up early. Now, I don't know about you, but I love the early mornings. Now, why? Well, one, there's nobody around who's awake. <laughs> it's a wonderful feeling. It's very quiet. I remember one house I was in, one of the ashrams, where 
if you got up too late, there was like dogs barking for hours outside. And then those neighbors are arguing and there's a traffic, the car's going by and you're sitting there trying to feel God's grace. It's a little bit more difficult. So if you can get up a little earlier, I call that a grace time. There's nobody awake. It's just a wonderful time. There's no conflicting thoughts, negativity, people arguing, people uh, uh, doing all kinds of things. It's just very quiet and so still. And Master said, God's voice is silence. So in the morning hours, if you can get up at that time, meditation is wonderful. It just, it's a whole nother story. Even if you go back to bed, I, I would hope that you don't go back to bed, but if you get up early and meditate, it's like, it's a whole nother world. It's a whole nother dimension. Now, I know that's hard for some of you, but Master gave some uh, wonderful tips for that. He said, even in the bed, to lie in bed if you can't get up and just charge your body battery. Inhale the double breath and the whole body's charged with energy and do that, then exhale and then inhale and let the air go out. Inhale, exhale. You can do it many times until you feel like, okay, I'm getting up now, I'm awake. And then when you get up, uh, Swamiji gave a good, too, a good uh, thing you can do. He said, put your alarm clock on the other side of the room and just let it ring, ring, ring until you feel like, okay, I'm gonna get up now and turn that thing off. And then when you get out of the bed, master stand next to the bed. If you're still feeling a little sleepy, so just march in place and inhale, breathe, and you know, get the energy moving. You might do a variety of the energizers. You might do the whole set of energization right there, but you need to, you need a transition. And I remember um, these transitional things really help you. But I remember uh, a time when um, there was someone in the ashram and they said, oh, Dhyanandji, I love it. It's wonderful to think about getting up early, but I just can't do it. And so that she said, well, you come to my door and knock on the morning. Sure, I'll come. And when I come to the door, I'll say Jai Guru. And you from the inside, you say Jai Guru. And that means you got up and everything. So she came for a couple of days and then after going Jai Guru and then you know the voice got lower and lower Jai Guru and then Jai Jai Guru <laughs> it's like she was sleeping and I said I'm not gonna come knock on your door anymore and I remember another time when there were some of the disciples at the uh Guru Bais at the center and everybody was saying you know we want God alone we're gonna we're gonna go for God we're gonna get up early we're gonna meditate long and and they wanted you, you're going to join us on you. I said, of course I'm going to join you. So, so what happens? The first day, they said, we're all going to be there. So I go down to the temple and I look around and there's nobody there. And then, and then they came the next day and they said, no, we're so sorry. I said, I said, listen, you said God alone. It was I'm alone. Nobody is here. So you have to use a little bit of discipline to get yourself up. But then you just feel so wonderful. Your day just goes so much better. So that grace period, use that time to attune to God while it's quiet and still everywhere else. The second thing now is to transition into your meditation room. Do your energization. I have to tell you, I'm enjoying energizing twice a day. And I've said this, and I, I'll say it again. Someone told me they're doing three times a day. And what they said was the first time is sort of like a stretching. <laughs> I can understand that. They said, it just doesn't, and it's a fellow who's a really strong guy. He said, it's just kind of like my body gets kind of stretched out. And he said, the second time I really start feeling the energy. He said, by the third time, it's, it's, it's power flowing through me. And I'm starting to feel that, you know, by doing it twice. And here's the other thing you can do. Why always do the minimum? So people say, okay, it's three, so I'll do three, you know, and half baked three ones anyway. Why not do five? Why not do six? Why do do seven of each one? But build up your energy base, your magnetism in your body. And if you really energize well every day, wow, your meditation is just deep. I know people just don't hardly breathe. 
They're not moving, they're not breathing, but they're energizing. Well, this isn't energization. The other thing is Mahamudra, those who are Kriya bonds, even if you're in preparation, do Mahamudra with power. Do a 15 minutes, do seven rounds, do 10 rounds if you can. Do as much as you can so that you are ready to meditate. You can't draw God's grace if you're wimpy. I know you know that word, and it means just kind of, okay, where's my bed chai <laughs> and people just wait for the chai and then they kind of go off to the meditation room who's going to come to you nobody and so if you can do mahamudra i've been doing more mahamudra as well during this unhealthy time more energization mahamudra will certainly get you stronger and i've been doing mahamudra before kriya and after you know so just don't always think well i just did i just did enough i'm gonna do enough do more now and you may do some yoga postures. I do yoga postures every day for years, every day. To certain parts of the body, you know, just are tense. The back, the neck, the knees, the arms, whatever. Typically the whole body. But <laughs> If you can do Ananda Yoga, you just feel like, wow, I just love this flow of energy. So that will transition you into your meditation room. Now about the meditation room itself, it should be kept clean and beautiful. There was a Swami who came to Ananda village years back. Swami Kriyananda had invited him. He was walking through the garden, uh, our vegetable garden. He saw this rusty can and he said, now what is that? Everything else was so beautiful and clean. He said, what is that? Then someone said, oh, we used that to water some of the smaller plants. And and he said, well, that, that's drawing, a, that can draw very dark vibration. And um, he said, you should clean that. If you're gonna use it, clean it, paint it, put it in a, a, its own place and don't just throw something down the ground. I just think people need to learn that. And in your meditation room, it should be absolutely clean. Clean it every day. You clean yourself every day, clean your house, clean the meditation room, put flowers, whatever you want, candles, it's up to you. But it should be a place where God is going to want to come. Not a, there's a pillow over there, there's a scarf there. Okay, I haven't cleaned the altar for weeks. And make the altar just so beautiful. Swamiji said that a murti, and I'm sure he meant for an altar too, a murti comes to life from the devotion of the devotee, of the disciple there. And that Murti and the altar should just be shining with light because you just, they're, they're well kept. There's beautiful flowers there. They're drawing that vibration. Also chant, the chanting should be just done with so much love. Now this, these are all drawing the grace of God. I remember Kamala Silva said to us, she was one of master's foremost women disciples. And she said, um, we were chanting with her too. Her, she was very elderly by then and we were chanting I think it was door of my heart but she stopped and she said oh master that would draw master <laughs> it was and you just think would your meditation room would your chanting would your uh, affirmations would your devotion would your japa would your energization would your career draw the masters think about that they should and speaking of that, as you meditate, meditate with the gurus. Feel, okay, they're with me. They're helping me right here and now. I remember a man who had trouble. No one could help him. And then I checked his kriyas, and, and I, just, I just gave him some advice, but I didn't know what else to do. And I saw him a few months later, and then his were perfectly well. Man, they were beautiful. I said, what happened? He said, I finally realized that I had to call on the grace of the guru. I just couldn't believe it. And I remember another man, he was the first person we gave Kriya to with, uh, uh, we had lessons and uh, tapes then you used, and we sent them in Bolivia. And I was doing the Kriya Sangha there at that time in America. So I called him to say, how did it go? How did, you know, do you understand everything? And, and um, finally, I don't have time to go into that whole story, but it's a great story itself. But at the, at the end, he just said, I understand everything. 
because a question I ask master and a light appears and he tells me what to do. And I just hung the phone up. He doesn't need to talk to me. He's got the direct line of grace from the guru. And so as you're meditating, don't date alone. Meditate with the guru. Meditate with God. Meditate with the divine mother. And just keep drawing them into your consciousness. And uh, finally, after that, do prayers. Prayers for people, prayers for others. Pray to the master for your own life. <clears throat> what should I do if you have questions? Uh, in particular, talk to master. I remember someone said to me once, oh, I've been transferred to do this job in another state. And, and what do you think? And said, me? Have you asked master about that yet? And isn't that the thing? You need to talk to him. People call up their friends. They go on, uh, go to an astrologer. They go to a psychic. They they talk it through with the with somebody else. But you need to go to the guru and ask, what should I do? How should I proceed? What is the right thing in everything? Well, how should I work with my children? What about my? What about everything? It all comes from grace. As Swamiji said, it's reading that grace has to come. You have to be charged with it yourself for you to draw God and Guru's help. So I want to close now with an affirmation that all of Ananda is you during this uh, time of difficulty. And I'll ask you to repeat it with me. And then afterwards, we will do a healing prayer. Let me read the affirmation first. This is by Master from Scientific Healing Affirmations. Then we'll do it together. <clears throat> Listen first, Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle of nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well, for thou art in all my body parts. Let's do this together. Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle of my nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well, for thou art in all my body parts. Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle of nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well. For thou art in all my body parts. Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle of nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well, for thou art in all my body parts. For thou art in all my body parts. Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every, cell, every corpuscle, every particle of nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well. For thou art in all body parts. Whispering, Heavenly Father, thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle. Mentally, Heavenly Father, Thou art present in every atom, every cell, every corpuscle, every particle of nerve, brain, and tissue. I am well, for Thou art in all my body parts. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Feel the power grace, the healing energy of God and the masters who are blessing us now for this day.
They'll hold in the light your family, your friends, your coworkers, anyone who you know. Let God's power, like the powerful waterfall of grace, feel it flowing into you. Tense the arms, not just tense till they vibrate, both arms and relax. Both arms tense till they vibrate, the forearms and relax. Once more, tense the forearms, relax. Now rub <clears throat> one forearm, We're getting the energy down to the palms. Rub the other, now touch the medulla. And just feel from the medulla, visualize, bring your arms out, feel the vibrations in your arms and your hands. Mentally say, I am a channel of light, God's light and healing. Rub the hands together, <clears throat> making magnets of the hands. Raise your hands and let's chant Om, sending a powerful energy, and vibration of healing to all those in need. Oh, 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 Now for all those affected by the virus all around the world, just see the light of God coming, healing, protecting, banishing this disease, this virus. Keep looking at the spiritual eye and feeling the power of God, his grace, grace of the gurus flooding your being, flowing out through your hands. Keep visualizing that gray light going out into where you work, the home of everybody, and then send that light around India, protective light and healing light, and around the world. All places, all, all people, Let's ask our masters to flood this earth with their vibrations of light. Rub the hands once more. <clears throat> Chant Om three more times. Om. Om. For today, let's do this Om. You can stand with me. Om Tatsat as we finish our morning. Om Tatsat with the hands forward and back touching. Om. You and your light is protecting them. Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat. This great practice that Master gave us. May you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Om Shanti, Shanti.